from a place of kindness. We stop invalidating their success or their experiences because we don't have them, right? Instead, we validate their success and their experiences even though we don't have them. You're listening to the Stethoscopes to Swaddles podcast with Shira Bergbauer, episode number 92. Today on the podcast, I want to talk about jealousy and envy. Because it's Thanksgiving week, I thought this would be a good week to talk about that because this is the week where we are at our most grateful. We are thinking about all the things that we're grateful for. Why not bring up jealousy and envy? Because this is also the time that we get to see family that we haven't seen in a while, friends we haven't seen in a while, and sometimes these emotions can come up. You may be beating yourself up if you feel these emotions, or you may be experiencing the consequence of another person feeling these emotions towards you. And so I thought this would be a good, you know, opening to the holiday season to talk about that. Hey, Mama, you deserve a life free of overwhelm and burnout. Welcome to the Stethoscopes to Swaddles podcast. I'm your host, life and mindset coach, Shiro Bergbauer. I'm also a wife, mom, and CRNA. This is the podcast for high-achieving mamas in medicine like you and I. Together, we'll learn how to navigate the ups and downs of working motherhood. If you're looking to thrive in your relationships and overcome overwhelm in your motherhood, marriage, and medicine, you're in the right place. Welcome to the Stethoscopes to Swaddles podcast. So before I begin, I wanted to talk about the definition. I feel like sometimes I get very caught up in definitions. And so for the purpose of this episode, I kind of want us to think of envy and jealousy as almost being similar in many ways. But I want to share the dictionary definition, which is envy is the painful feeling of wanting what someone else has, maybe like their attributes or their possessions. But if you're jealous, you feel threatened, protective, or fearful of losing your position or situation to someone else. The way I think about it is like envy is like if somebody has a nice car or something that you maybe like, you can be envious. Jealous can be like if you, for example, have a friend and somebody else is friends with your friend and you feel like maybe that person is a threat to you because you're afraid of losing your position in your friend's life. So that would be more jealousy, right? Like when we get in the woods about the definitions, most of the things that I've read about jealousy, it's like usually there has to be a third party or a third person or a third thing in order for the threat to exist. But for the purpose of this episode, I just want you to think about envy as just like, you know, wanting what somebody else has. And I think kind of how it gets a little different is maybe you may feel hostility towards somebody who you think has an advantage over you. And so those feelings may come up in, you know, interchangeably. Some examples in which things you may be envious or jealous, but mostly envious, it could be money or wealth. It could be career progress, lifestyle, family, material things, or circumstances. And I'll give you an example of how this can look. I knew of somebody, she was an acquaintance, but she disliked this other person. And she expressed that to me. What I realized is that the reason she felt this dislike towards the other person was actually because she felt envious of the person because this person's life circumstances had ended up differently from what the person who was envious had thought. So it's one of those where, like, she was just surprised that this other person's life had turned out so promising and exciting, and she had all the things and the husband and the home, and and she in her mind it was like she didn't deserve them. And so that can be a way, like, in which it's almost like, you know, you feel jealous and envious because you want what they have, but also you feel like, well, they have something that I should have, for example. 
Another way is like if somebody maybe gets a job promotion that you are looking forward to and you don't get it and you feel envy towards the person, right? Or if this happens a lot on social media when you look at people's images and their curated images and their seemingly picture-perfect lives and you're like, oh my gosh, I wish I had that. It's not fair. This person doesn't even work hard as I do. And I have, you know, more than they do. And for most of us, it's usually, it's not that we want their exact life. <laughs> it's like we want the life that we have right now with the extras, right? And it could also be just like envy. For me, when I think of envy as far as family dynamics, growing up, I envied my friends whose parents were together and you know who seemed to be happy and who seemed to have it all together and their dads were always on the ball and their dads like picked them up from school and did things with them I envied them I didn't want to be in their family <laughs> right I just wish I had what they had versus like I remember as a child I would have these friends and they didn't like each other and so it was almost like weird because I felt like I was always fielding these like people from each other because they didn't like each other, but then they felt like they were competing for, I guess, a role in my life. So I think that's more jealousy. But I just want to offer you, like, if you find yourself feeling any of these emotions, like you're just human, like that happens to all of us. But I wanted to kind of share something that I read from Bev Aaron's book and I believe the title of the book is Believing on Purpose. I'll link it in the show notes. But she said something that really struck me. And she said, any envy is wasted. It means I'm living in other people's business, neglecting mine, wasting my possibility for joy in that moment. So when I think about a, a model, right, the circumstance in the sea line can be like the fact, like, so-and-so has this car, for example. And then we can look at the thoughts because the circumstances are things that we can literally prove exist, right? Like the existence of the house that they have or the car that they have or, you know, the number of children that they have or, you know, their spouse or whatever. Like we can put that in the circumstance line of our model. And then the thoughts can be, you know, I deserve more than her or him or it's not fair or it could even like simply be like just the wishful thing, like I wish I had his life or her life, right? Like I think we've all kind of had that moment where like, oh, it must be nice to do this. And I kind of wanted to like step on the soapbox here for a second because I do not like that phrase, like it must be nice because most of the time it's not well-intentioned. And I'll tell you why that is the case. So I've mentioned on the podcast that earlier this year, I decided to step down from a full-time role in my primary job to focus on growing my business. And so that looked like going per diem, working one day a week in anesthesia there, and then working outside of that facility with more flexible hours so that I had time for my business. And the first few months, every time I went to my main job, which I've worked there for 10 years... People would say to me, must be nice to only work one day a week. Now, I'm not saying that these people are jealous or envious, but I really had to like coach myself on that because I found myself getting very irritated when people would say that to me because to me, they were assuming that I have this like, and I never presented myself that way, but they, it was like they were assuming that I was just like, you know, living the lady who lunches life. And let's say like that was really the case. I think for them to say that to me wasn't like, oh, congratulations, you're living the life. No, it was like, well, it must be nice you're living the life while the rest of us work five days a week. But that discounts the work that I'm doing in my business, in private practice, like all the things that I'm doing to grow my business, right? It It means that I have this time to focus on my business, but I'm not sitting on the couch watching Netflix all day. I'm actually working. So I think when we say to people, like, must be nice, 
even when we mean well, it just like it it dismisses the amount of effort that they're putting in the things that they're doing. So and I'll tell you like a different even perspective of this. I have this friend who she she works one day a week. She is like hands on mom, takes care of her kids, does all the things. She is like all hands on deck with her kids. And she's kind of in the same situation as me where she works one day a week. And when people say things to her, and they've said it in my presence too, to insinuate that her life is so much easier because she only works one day a week, to me that just comes across as like envious because you're invalidating what this person does the rest of the week, right? Like you're not paying attention to her life. Because we all have a choice. Like you can choose to work full time and grow your business, you know, and, and grow your business while working full time. You can choose to step down a little bit, grow your business. We all have that choice, at least in in the circles I'm running in, right? Because we have the privilege of making the income that we do in anesthesia. I think it's a choice. But anyway, I just wanted to get on that soapbox because I feel like when people say it must be nice, like it's not usually well intentioned. Anyway. So what are the feelings that come up with these thoughts, like the thoughts that you deserve more than the other person, or it's not fair, or you wish you had his or her life, right? So the two big ones are obviously envy and jealousy, which we talked about. And inadequacy can also kind of creep up there when you get in that whole compare and despair. I think especially in parenting and marriage, we do that a lot. Like, you know, I remember... When my daughter was little and my friend's daughter is the same age, like every time her daughter would hit a milestone and she would tell me I'd be happy for her, but I would find myself comparing and then getting into despair. And then I was on the giving end of that compare and despair where my daughter was meeting certain milestones and I would be sharing them with other people and I could notice like it was like... I didn't say it to like brag about my daughter, but then when I did it and their kid hadn't accomplished that, I could see how that could be received in a way like, well, my kid hasn't done that. Like, I don't want to hear about it. So sometimes it's that emotion of inadequacy can come up where it's like, oh, well, this person has more than me or this person's life seems better than me. Like one example I think is so interesting is the concept of like people sharing when they go on vacation on social media. And literally, it could just be an innocent share. And this has happened to a good friend of mine where she's like innocently sharing before she had kids, she'd travel all the time. And then somebody told her, said to her, oh, you're always showing off about your vacations. And that was never her intention. Like she literally just wanted to create this like journal in her Facebook, right? But it was received that way. And it was almost like it was bringing up feelings of inadequacy for the other person who was like, well, you're showing off. And I recently saw this tongue-in-cheek quote on on social media that was like, you know, if you think somebody is showing off on social media, it's not them, it's you. Like, check yourself. And I, and I think that's really, really true. Okay, so what are the actions in the model when you're feeling envious or jealous? Like, what are you doing? And I'm going to paraphrase what I just read you, the quote by uh, Bev Aaron, which is, you're living in other people's business, right? You neglect your own business, and you don't experience joy in the moment. So, you know, Byron Katie says, there's God's business, other people's business, and your business. When you spend time living in other people's business, what happens is then you step away from your business, right? You step away from seeing what's working in your own life, and you start comparing yourself to other people. And when you spend so much effort and energy focusing on other people's business, you can get caught up in that and even spiral even more in that comparing and despairing. And the result of that is that you don't experience joy in the moment, so you don't enjoy your life. The very life that you're almost avoiding while paying attention to the other person's life or lifestyle or things or material possessions, whatever, you're not enjoying it because your brain is so in the moment, expending so much energy on what the other person is doing or has or is experiencing that you don't experience your own life. I just think that is such a sad way to live life. Like you're you're in this life, 
but you're over there. <laughs> like you're not here where your life is supposed to be. And it made me think of this quote, and, and I know it's by a Buddhist monk, and I forget, I heard it, I think, from Christine Neff, who wrote, who's written a lot of on self-compassion. But she talks about this equation, which is suffering is pain times resistance. And we don't necessarily, we can't necessarily decrease the pain. Like even like, let's say you have a baseline jealousy or envy amount. The increased suffering is really because of the increased resistance, like resisting what is in the pursuit of what you think it should be. So if you're resisting your current life and you're like complaining and you are like not noticing what's working in your own life, your suffering is increased because your resistance just keeps going up. It's like that dial, you just keep dialing up the resistance. So I want to switch gears a little bit. But before I do that, I'm going to share with you a quote by one of my favorites, of course, Young Pueblo. And he says, the greatest purpose that jealousy serves is letting you know that you aren't loving and accepting yourself enough. Jealousy leaves the imprint of craving and aversion in the subconscious of the mind because you crave what someone else has and you feel the tension of aversion because you don't have the thing that you crave. So jealousy can also be very self-centered, he continues, because all you can think of is yourself, right? So how you can redirect this is to remember that people move at different speeds, even when we have similar goals. How and when we get to our goals is a unique journey. Sympathetic joy, which is feeling joy when you see the success of others, is the opposite of jealousy. And before I get into the antidote of jealousy and envy, I really want to drive that point home of sympathetic joy. I have been so blessed over the last couple of years to be in communities where celebration of success is normalized. I have been so blessed to have friends who celebrate my success and I celebrate their success. And it's that awareness of sympathetic joy, even when my friends don't know what exactly it is that I do, when I share a win with them, it's celebrated. And so when they share wins with me, I celebrate them. Like earlier this year, one of my very good friends bought a house. I was so excited. Like I remember telling my husband about it and he was like, wow, you're so excited. And I'm like, I'm so happy for her because not only is she, like, does she get the house that she wanted, like she's living closer to us now, like her kids are going to be closer and like her house is amazing. And I had no feelings of, oh my God, her house is better than mine. To the naked eye, that could be true. But like my excitement was really about having that sympathetic joy. Now, have I had moments of jealousy? Absolutely. Have I had moments of envy? Absolutely. Like you know, when you're in your 10s and all your friends seem to be in stable relationships and you just cannot be in a stable relationship or people seem to be achieving levels of success and you're feeling like you're behind. I've been there. Like, I'm not saying that I've never experienced these emotions. What I am saying is being on the opposite of these emotions is actually way more fulfilling because jealousy and envy are such indulgent thoughts. And it's almost like when you think that you should have something that somebody else has, it's almost like you think that they cheated the system by getting what they have. And it's like the most unfair way to visualize somebody else's success, even though let's say they inherited the success, right? Now, envy can show up in ways that we don't recognize them for what it is. Sometimes it can just be not being happy for somebody because they've accomplished something. That can be the obvious one, right? But it could also be like finding yourself looking for what's wrong with other people in order to kind of like put yourself forward. I'll give you this example. I knew somebody in my life who loved to drive the point home that I was older than them. And what this person would do is make these digs about like my age. And it wasn't from a like clean place. I could tell that. And so to me, it was like they were making these digs about my age so they could feel better about themselves by putting me down. And maybe it worked. Maybe it didn't. 
But just notice how like when you're doing that, you're also kind of like not being at your core self, which is like a calm and curious and compassionate person. Instead, you are showing up from a place of inadequacy because it's almost like if I make this person feel bad, then they'll I'll feel better, which never really works. How do we flip the script? How do we even step out of like envy and and all of that? So the first thing is mindfulness. And mindfulness really is being in the here and now and and just like being conscious and aware of what is working. Because when we are in envy and jealousy, we don't solve for how we can make our lives better, right? When we are in jealousy or envy, we are so indulgent in, well, it's not fair or things aren't working my way that we don't solve for how we can make it better. When we are mindful, when we are fully present, aware of where we are and what we're doing and not overreacting or being overwhelmed by what's going on, we can be in the here and now and appreciate everything that we have. When we bring awareness to what we're directly experiencing, right, we're being mindful. And when we teach our brain to be mindful, we're literally creating changes in the brain, but we also wake up the inner workings of our mental, emotional, and physical processes. So I want you to think about, like, let's say you were thinking about somebody has something that you don't have or, you know, you don't like somebody, they're prettier than you, they're taller than you, they're whatever. And I say to you, notice the ground that's holding you up. Just being in the here and now, like, notice the chair you're sitting on. Notice where you are, right? Right? That brings you back to the present, like instead of wishful thinking and this is what I should have, this is what they should have, da 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 da. Like coming back to here and now can make your brain like reset, like, okay, maybe it's time for me to focus on what I already have, right? So mindfulness is really coming to that. And then the next step is practicing gratitude. And like I said, this is a wonderful week for us to sit in gratitude, but it's also a week where the opportunity for envy and jealousy is very high. And what I want you to be aware is being in gratitude doesn't have to mean like making these displays of, you know, I'm grateful for all these things and telling everybody. It's literally just like being thankful and being willing to show appreciation and for and to return kindness. So, you know, when you're at the Thanksgiving table and you feel pressured to say you're thankful to something, you could just be thankful for yourself, right? It doesn't have to be other people or material things, or it could be the gift of health, the gift of being here, the gift of having friends and family. You know, I always think like with my family, like we don't, we, the proximity for us is like a thing, right? Like My sister lives in Canada. My dad lives in Canada. My mom lives out of state. My brother lives out of state. My in-laws live in Europe. Having us all together at the same time is almost impossible. It is possible, but it just takes a lot. And so I think in the moment, right, I could be envious of my friends who have family close by, or I could be grateful that even though we don't have actual like family of origin close to us my daughter doesn't ever feel that she doesn't have family because we have our friends who are like our family so being grateful doesn't mean I go out there and look for superfluous things to be grateful for it could just be like being grateful that we have an amazing nanny who is like family to my daughter and being grateful for public transportation and airplanes and you know that bring Oma and Opa from Europe to visit like that's what I'm talking about Because when we focus on what's working for us, right, when we go on the social medias and we see the people doing the things, we're not busy thinking about how their life is much better than ours because we're anchored in our own lives and what's working. And I always think you can't solve for your life when you are in an emotion like jealousy or envy, right? You can't solve for how to create a business or how to increase your income or how to buy more furniture if you like somebody else's furniture. You can't solve for that from a jealous or, or, you know, envious place, right? So come back to this here and now and practice gratitude so that you can solve for it. 
The third thing is self-compassion, right? We've talked about self-compassion over and over. And the reason I bring this up is because if you find yourself envious or jealous, it can be very easy to be so hard on yourself, like, oh, like do better, right? And being so hard on ourselves. But I just want you to remember nothing's gone wrong. Like you're just a human with a human brain who tends to look at what others have to compare, right? So that's normal. It's okay that that happens to you because you're human. It's part of the human experience. Be kind to yourself. But also, being self-compassionate can be the antidote to jealousy or envy because you stop thinking something is wrong with you or something isn't right because you don't have or you're not. Right? You accept who you are in the here and now. The fourth one The fourth antidote is emotional maturity. And the reason I I kind of put it on its own is I wanted to share six signs of maturity as Young Pueblo describes in his book, Clarity and Connection, which I will also link in the show notes. He says the six signs of maturity are, one, being open to vulnerability. Two, learning and letting go. Three, Seeing more perspectives than just your own. Four, accepting responsibility for your happiness. Five, prioritizing practices that help you grow. And six, pausing to think instead of reacting honestly with yourself and others. If you are an emotional maturity, you can see how you accept responsibility for your happiness and not expect that the things or or the people that they have that you don't have, that you wish for and you're envious for, you don't think that that's what's going to create your happiness. You create that happiness for yourself in the here and now. Number five is kindness. And that is kindness to ourselves, but also kindness towards other people. Because when we can show up in loving kindness towards other people, then we honor their achievements. We honor their accomplishments. We honor what they have. From a place of kindness, we stop invalidating their success or their experiences because we don't have them, right? Instead, we validate their success and their experiences, even though we don't have them, because we get to celebrate other people's lives, even if they're not a direct impact on us. I remember I was recently meeting with my coach and and some of my cohort and my coach's house And one of the ladies said something that was so profound to me about like making lots of money. And she said, you know, making lots of money is good because it means we can go out in the world and do more to help other people. And I was thinking about this, like when you see somebody making more income than you or having more money than you and you think, oh, it's not fair. They have more and I don't. You forget that them having more means that they can go out in the world and help other people because The point is, money is always in flow. So if we can help other people with what we have, isn't that like the best outcome for everybody in the world, right? The last antidote that I wanted to share today is acceptance. And it kind of goes with gratitude, but acceptance is like knowing that what you are and who you are is exactly who you're supposed to be right now, right? Let's say you have goals and big goals and Right now, you haven't met them, but then there are people in your life that have met them. Acceptance means that you can be happy for them and still cheer yourself on the journey, right? It could be maybe you had set this goal of losing 50 pounds before the holidays. It's Thanksgiving, and your mother-in-law makes a comment about your weight, and your sister-in-law looks fabulous, and you start feeling envious about your sister-in-law. You can just accept that you haven't met your goal yet, and that's okay. And she's maybe met her goal, and that's okay too. Like, not taking away from her experience. And also, if your mother-in-law is commenting on your weight, it's time to set some boundaries, (laughs) okay? I just shared that example as, like, something that might happen around the holidays. And, you know, going back to kindness and and acceptance, it's really also has a lot to do with self-love, right? Because when you relate with, to yourself with compassion, honesty, and openness, and you meet yourself with unconditional acceptance, 
that is the definition of self-love, right? When you can love yourself from the parts of yourself that you find easy to love to the rough and imperfect parts that you try to hide from, like envy or jealousy, and, and meet yourself where you are, right? It doesn't just stop at acceptance. It's embracing all of that and also knowing that you have room to grow and you have so much to let go of. When I read that in Young Pueblo's book, Lighter, I was like, yeah, that's what it is. Right now, I'm flawed in some ways. I'm imperfect, but I'm also on my way to change, right? So it's okay that I'm those things. I accept myself in those ways, and I just love myself for who I am. So, and to touch on just like the last point about emotional maturity, it's also being able to see another person succeed and feeling inspired instead of feeling jealous. So another antidote for that emotion of jealous is inspired. Like for me, when I look at women who are who have gone before me, who are examples of what's possible, I am like every time they announce like their revenue goals and their success, I'm like, yes, it's possible for them, so it's possible for me. When I see happy marriages, I'm like, this is possible. Like, People who have been married for 30, 40 years, I'm not like, oh, my God, I'm so jealous of them. I'm so envious. I'm like, yes, a 50-year-old marriage is possible. Like, for me, I want to be inspired. I want to see the people who have the things that I desire and feel great inspiration and motivation. I want to see people who have gone before me and be truly, truly inspired. And when I catch myself feeling jealous or envious, I ask myself, like, what am I thinking about this situation? Am I thinking that this is impossible for me too? Like, I'll give you an example. And I wouldn't even call it envy, but I remember I was following this girl on social media and she just had like so much style and so much like, she was just like perfect. And I wanted to like embody what she had. And what I did, I caught myself like almost like being like, wow, well, I wonder how she gets the money to buy this thing and and questioning that. And instead I was like, I just love her style. Like, I want to be like her in my own version. And I just want to, like, accept that I'm not going to be her, (laughs) right? (laughs) Like, it's okay that I'm trying to, like, curate this version of me that's stylish and, like, fashionable and she inspires me. But I don't need to be jealous of her. Like, there's room for all of us to win, right? So when you go out in the world and you find yourself envious or jealous, just ask yourself, is it serving me? Is it serving my highest purpose for me to want what that's, this person has or for me to even have this thought that they shouldn't have what they do have? And I'm going to tell you, like, if you have a thought that somebody shouldn't have what they already have, you're just arguing with reality, right? You're just increasing your suffering because you're increasing your resistance. Resistance is actually arguing with reality. They already have the things. They already have the husband or the house or the things that you're envious of. You thinking that they shouldn't have them (laughs) is just increasing one person's suffering, yours. So choose to be in acceptance and self-compassion instead. And choose to be inspired. Choose to believe like, oh, it's possible for them. Therefore, it's possible for me. You know what I mean? Like, it is so possible for me to have the life that they're creating. I don't have to hope that they fall and trip and break their ankle. Because I, when I was a child, like, when somebody had something I wanted, I'm like, well, I hope something not nice happens for them, which I'm being truly vulnerable here. But it didn't happen, and then I was still wishing I had the thing that they had. In this case, it was, like, this beautiful bracelet, which now I'm like, I can buy all the bracelets, right? <laughs> but, like, when you find yourself there... Be okay with being a human who has those emotions, but then set the expectations for yourself to do better, show up better. So I hope you have a great week. I hope you get to be with your family and share and break bread and have a wonderful time this week. For you who celebrate Thanksgiving, if celebrating Thanksgiving is not your jam, I totally respect that. I think in last year's Thanksgiving episodes, I talked about like just understanding the history of Thanksgiving and and being respectful of those who choose not to observe it. So if that's you, I still want you to think about like being grateful in this week when it's all the rage and then continue to think about that. 
I wanted to also remind you that I will be hosting a workshop called Boundaries and Navigating the Holidays with Family on December 3rd at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. So I will link the registration to that in the show notes. I would love to see you there. This call is going to be an opportunity for you to get coached live on any situation as as far as boundaries and dealing with your family members during the holidays. I'll be coaching live. It will be very engaging. You are going to like walk away from this workshop knowing exactly how to set boundaries, what boundaries are, what boundaries are not, and you will be so prepared to handle family during the holidays. You're going to be glad you came. And if you can't come live, because I know schedules get crazy, if you're registered for the workshop, you will receive a private podcast replay of the workshop. So I set them up this way so those who can't come still get an opportunity to participate and hear people getting coached and all of that. I'd love, love, love to have you join us. I will see you next week if you're coming to the workshop. If not, we'll talk next week. Have a great week. Bye now. I'm Shira Bergbauer, and you've been listening to the Stethoscopes to Swaddles podcast. New episodes are out every Monday. These episodes are created by me, Shira Bergbauer, and produced by Cassidy Mitchell. If you enjoyed this show or found it helpful, please rate it and review us on Apple Podcasts. The concepts I share on this podcast resonate with you, or you're ready to change your relationships and mindset, I can help you. If you'd like in-depth, personalized support, I'd love to invite you to apply for my Life and Mindset coaching program. Just imagine you and I every week working together as I teach you the tools to up-level your life. To book your free one-hour consultation call, go to www.stethoscopestoswaddles.com forward slash consultation. You're doing a great job, Mama. Have a great week. Bye now.